in this video, we're going to practice entering all of the characters that you see in this expression onto the TI-84 graphing calculator by using some of its great functions such as absolute values and exponents, etc. So let's take a look at these many keys and how we can use them to make this expression write exactly that way on the calculator. So the first thing we're going to look for are these parentheses. The second thing we're going to look at are the exponent keys. Now if you look here, you see a little carrot, like a little upwards facing carrot right here. And that is an exponent button. And this button right here with a little x squared, that's a quick button if your exponent is a 2 then instead of raising something to the second power, you can simply press this button and it will automatically put it to there. Like, let's say I want to square the number 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the number 7, and then instead of raising it to the second power, I'm going to just press a 7 and press the x squared key. All right, so it's pretty fast. It takes these two keys, right? I would have had to raise it to the second power, and I only have to press this one key. So that's the exponent for 2, and any other exponent, you would use this button. Now let's get started. So we're going to press our open parens, and now we need to enter negative 2. So I want you to carefully look down here, underneath the number 3, on your calculator, that button right there. That is the negative key. This button right here, that is the subtraction key. And they're two totally different things. So if you want to type negative 2, you need to press the negative key. I'm going to type the subtraction key next to it just so you can kind of quickly see how different they look. You see how different they look? So a negative key is really tiny, raised up a little bit, and the subtraction key is horizontal right in the middle. I'm going to delete that subtraction key because I don't need that. And I'm going to enter my 2 here. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. And since it's raised to the fourth power, I cannot use this square button. I have to actually raise it up to the fourth power. Now, if I want to write subtract 3 and I just start typing subtract 3, you'll notice that it's actually still up here in the exponent section. And I want it down here horizontally with the rest of the expression. So I need to go back and delete these two items. And once I've typed my exponent, if I want to get out of the exponent area, I actually need to press my right arrow button right over here. If you press that right arrow button right over here, it will take you out of the exponent line and back down to the main line. So now I need to type subtract 3. And now I need to type the absolute value bars. And there's two ways to get there. So I guess for some kids, they tell me the fastest way is just to go to the catalog of all of the operators. So if I press uh, this blue word down here, right above the number zero, you see that in blue, it says catalog. If I want to get to the catalog, I actually have to press the blue button first. Now watch this cursor right here. See how it's a black rectangle? But when I press the blue second key, it turns into an up arrow. That means it's going to go up and do all of the blue words that up above the buttons. So if I want to use catalog, I now press zero. It takes me to the catalog of all of the things this calculator can do. I can arrow down to all of these other functions. But if I want absolute value, then I'm going to use this first function right here, ABS, parentheses. So I make sure my little arrow is pointed towards what I want to select. And when I'm ready to select it, I press enter. And there you have it. There are your absolute value bars. Now inside my absolute value bars are a 5, a minus, and 11. 5, minus, 11. Now, if I don't want to put anything else inside these absolute value bars and I want to get out of it, again, I have to go back and use this right arrow key. Once I press it, it will take me out of those absolute value bars. So now I need to type plus. 2. Looks like I have a really big open parens sign here, so open parens. And now it's time to start this fraction. Now since this fraction has a whole series of numbers in the numerator, I need to get my fraction set up first. So I need a numerator area and I need a denominator area. So 
So in order to set that up vertically with a numerator and denominator, I need to uh, enter the fraction menu. So in order to get to the fraction menu, I have to use this green F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. You see those letters here? I need to use this green F1 key. But since it's in green, that means I have to press the green button first. And how do you know if the blue button is on? The cursor turns to a up arrow. So how do you know if the green button is on? Well, if you press it, it turns into the letter A for alpha. So now I know it's on, and it's going to activate all of these green things. So F1, F2, F3, these letters, A, B, C, D, etc. So now that it's on, I need to choose the F1 button, which is right here, with a Y equals. So I click that, and up pops my fraction menu. Now, there are other menus here, but we're only going to look at the fraction menu right now. We can have a numerator and denominator. We can have a mixed number fraction here, or a unit, a numerator, and a denominator. We can convert um, between fractions and, and mixed numbers. We can convert from fractions to decimals. So we're going to choose number one. You can either just press enter when it's highlighted, or you can simply type the number one. And there's our fraction. So on the top, we're going to type 2, parentheses, 7, close parens, subtraction, 4, absolute value. Now, the last time we typed absolute value, I took you to the catalog. This time, when we type absolute value, I'm going to take you to the math menu. So this third button down over here, which says math, that's another way to get to the absolute value function. So if I press math, and then I take my cursor and I arrow it over to the number menu. So I've got fractions, decimals, cubes, cube roots, x roots, etc. If I arrow to the right, I highlight my number menu, and there it is, absolute value again. So I'm going to choose that from here this time. Two minus three. Okay. Now I'm going to arrow down to get to my denominator. You see that I closed that absolute value. Now I deliberately typed something wrong up here. I'm not sure if you caught it, but if you didn't, you will catch it soon. Now down here I gotta get a square root sign. So the square root sign is right here, I don't know if you can see it, right here in blue. Which means I need to activate it with my blue second button and then my x squared key and now I'm ready to type in the radicand. So I need a negative 3 and I need to square it. So I can either raise it to the second power or I can press the square button shortcut. Now I need to add 2 times 17. Now I'm going to press my right arrow so I get out of this fraction here. I had to press it twice because I wanted to get out of the radicand. Then I wanted to get out of the denominator. And now I'm going to close my parens. Now let's see. I'm not sure if you notice, you see right up here, we're in the absolute value bars, it says 2 subtract 3, that's what it says here, 2 subtract 3, but if you look up here, do you see that I typed a negative sign on purpose? So I want to show you now how you can go back and fix that. You just press this left arrow, this left arrow right here, and you arrow back into the fraction, and then arrow up to get to the numerator, and you go right over that negative sign and you make it a subtraction sign. There we have it. Now I'm going to make one more mistake just to show you what happens uh, if you type a minus sign when it should be a negative sign, what the calculator is going to tell you. So this is a negative sign. I typed a negative sign. But what if I were to put a subtraction sign there? What's going to happen? So now I'm going to press enter and ask my calculator to evaluate all of this whole thing. And if I press enter, look what I get. I get an error message. So error syntax means there is an error in your typing. So syntax is a typing. So you have two options. You can either ask the calculator, hey, you know that typing mistake I made? Can you take me there and show me which one it is? Or you can um, quit. So I don't want to quit. I actually want to go to my mistake. So I'm going to choose number two, or I can arrow down and highlight number two and press enter. So if you see it right here, it is flashing the cursor right on my mistake. So it's like, um, you want me to subtract three squared, but you didn't tell me what you wanted to subtract three squared from. So I can't have a subtraction sign there. So I'm going to type the negative sign again. Let me go back. I'm going to 
type the negative sign. There we go. And I'm going to press enter. And voila. The answer to this really long expression is positive 2. So that's the tutorial. Now let's take a look at our other two questions from our notes. And I'm going to type them in a little faster this time. So I'm going to clear out what I have here. And I'm just going to start typing. 4 minus 2, open parens. The fraction key is in the alpha F1. Select choice number 1. And the absolute value bars are in math, number, choice number 1. And I'm going to type 17 minus 5. I'll type the square key over here. Oops, the square key over here. And then I'm going to get out of my absolute value bars and go down to the numerator. I'm going to type parentheses, square root, 3 plus 1. I'm going to get out of my radicand, press the close parens, square that whole radicand, get out of my fraction, close my parens, and square that whole quantity. Now look, my screen looks exactly like my paper over here. That's pretty awesome. Now I have to finish the sentence. Plus parentheses, 3 minus... 6, parentheses. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here on purpose. <laughs> I'm going to square this by accident instead of cubing it. So let's say I press enter and I get this answer. I'm like, 5! Five. Five's the answer. And my friends at the table are all like, 5 is not the answer. How did you get 5? And um, I want to go back and look at what I typed. So if you use your arrow keys here, your calculator actually has a function which allows you to go back up to what you were typing before. You see how it's all highlighted here? Well, if I highlight it by moving my arrow and then I press the enter button, it's going to copy and paste it down here where I can edit it and look it over again. So you see what that 2 is? I'm like, oh, I was supposed to cube it. So now that I've copied and pasted it, I don't have to type the whole thing all over again. I can just go back to that 2, change it to the 3, and realize that, oh, the answer is supposed to be negative 31. So negative 31. 17 minus 5 squared. Everything looks great here. All right, next question. Let's try this last one here. I'm going to clear my screen and then start typing. And now I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to press the buttons. All right, the answer to the third one is negative 45. 